Hi guys! In this video, we will install and test the Panda Jetpack, the Panda Claw, and the Panda Extruder on our Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, since our video about the upgrades from Big Tree Tech for the Bamboo Lab 3D printers, and which they call Pandas Love Bamboo, there has been a lot more products being released. It doesn't matter which printer you have from Bamboo Lab, because there are upgrades available for them all. We have already published a video about the Gnome display, and now we will install and test the Panda Jetpack, the Panda Claw, and the Panda Extruder on our Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. This is the Panda Claw. The Panda Claw is a set of metal gears for the X1 and P1 extruder. Inside the box we have the main gear, the lever with a small gear, a couple of bearings, and grease. The big gear connects to the extruder motor, and since it's a dual gear extruder, we have a smaller gear that will connect to a second small gear to help push or pull the filament. This is the second small gear and lever. There are also a couple of bearings and a plastic bag with grease. It's much easier to transfer the grease from the bag to a small syringe, not only to store it, but also to use it on the gears. The two bearings are attached to the main gear like this. Before installing the gears, make sure you add some grease on them. Make sure to keep the grease away from the areas where the filament will pass through. Next is the Panda Extruder. This is all metal and replaces the stock plastic one. It also includes a couple of bearings, Allen tools and a couple of screws. This was designed to be lightweight and strong at the same time. The advantage of having less weight is that you will have less mass moving around while printing, which also means less inertia, and that results in better print quality. Well, the theory sounds good. What about the practical results? Let's install everything and find out. Start by removing the screws and separate the two pieces. We then install the lever on the back piece, and then the gears. Push it all the way in until the small bearing goes into its slot. Before we can close this, we need to install more pieces that are on the original assembly, so let's remove the original extruder. We first disconnect the cable from the cover, next we loosen the cutter lever screw so that the blade can come out. To remove the entire extruder, we need to remove the screws that secure it. There are three in total, but we will leave one for last. We also need to remove the Hanan, and to do this, we remove the two screws on top of the heat sink. The PTFE tube also needs to come out. To remove it, push the ring down and pull it out. And then disconnect the cable from the filament runout sensor. And finally, we remove the third screw. Ok, and here are both extruders side by side. So, we still need to take the remaining parts, and to get them, we need to remove the four screws from the back of the extruder. And then we remove the screw that compresses the extruder lever spring. Now we can open the extruder cover and remove the spring and washer. 
We will take them and install on the metal extruder the same way. Install the long screw and tighten it all the way in. Now we can close the metal extruder. And for that, you will need the four screws. There is still one piece missing, and that is the filament runout sensor. To remove it, we only need to take out the two small screws out, and then use the tip of the finger to pull it out. We then install it on the metal extruder the same way. Ok, now we have the metal extruder fully assembled and ready to be installed on our printer. To install it on the print head is very simple. Attach the metal extruder with this orientation and make sure it's perfectly seated. Use the stock three screws to secure it. Then reconnect the filament runout sensor cable. Next, insert the filament cutting blade and secure the lever with the small screw. At the top, push the PTFE tube in. And finally, install back the hot end and connect all the cables from the hot end. And that's it! The metal extruder is installed. We also have the Panda Jetpack. This is a print head cover with less weight and includes the magnets to hold it on the print head the same way as the stock one, and also a four way fan duct. To install it, we need to remove the fan and light PCB from the stock cover first. The light PCB is secured with two screws and the fan is also secured with a couple of screws. Once they are out, we can install them on the Panda's cover. Make sure the cable from the fan is not pinched in any way. To install it on the printer, we simply connect the cable and place it from the bottom up because the nozzle needs to go in between the fan duct. Visually, it looks very nice and futuristic. Due to the weight difference, we decided to go ahead and run the leveling and resonance frequency calibration. So it can measure everything with the new parts. Before the installation of these new parts, we printed a stress model. And we will print it again now that we have the new parts in to compare the before and after. This model tests several things, so hopefully we will get more information from this upgrade. Ok, and here are both printed tests. At first, it's a bit difficult to see any differences between the before and after prints. They really look very similar. Both have a little bit of filament web, which indicates that the temperature needs to be adjusted a bit. The bridges have the same result. The tip of the cone is melted almost the same way as well. The overhang areas also have the same results. And the side walls are perfect on both. There are, however, very small differences like the bottom edge curve on the model, where the second version is slightly better than the first. Although this torture test is very complete in terms of types of tests, we could not see a big difference between the stock and the upgrade extruder. The biggest difference might be while printing models at very high speeds and accelerations, where the decrease of mass is more evident. Also, the durability of the new parts might also make the difference. Not to mention, if you change hot ends frequently, you will not have any issues with inserts failing while tightening the screws with the metal parts, since the parts are being tightened to the metal piece and not inserts. So, what do you guys think about this upgrade? Did any of you already install this upgrade on your printers? What is your feedback about it? Feel free to share your comments below in the comment section. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!